Hello everyone and welcome back to Elite Dangerous. You might have wondered whether in between all of my Kerbal Space Program activities whether I still played Elite Dangerous and I do. It is a very enjoyable game and I mainly do passenger missions to pick up credits. I'm also working on my Imperial rank so that I could potentially get an Imperial Clipper. I'm not there yet. I don't want to grind things out. I, I don't want to make it tedious so I only occasionally pop in and do a little bit and then, uh, you know, on a sort of relaxed basis. But here I am at Truly Dock. And in this video, I get my highest paying mission to date. I've never seen a mission like this before. And uh, here I am donating in order to increase my Imperial rank, of course, in the hope that eventually I can get an Imperial Clipper, which is a nice sleek ship. But in this video, I do manage to uh, accumulate the credits to get a different nice sleek ship, the Orca. And here's the mission I was talking about, 9.5 million credits. I've never seen such a thing, and it's not that hard a mission. There's only four destinations that this pass passenger wants to be brought to. It's a demanding passenger, but not criminal. Criminal means that you're likely to be shot at if you're carrying the passenger. So not going to be a very successful mission there. I try not to pick up any passenger contracts that involve criminals. I've learned the hard way that that's not a good way to go. But generally, they're fairly safe. Nobody, nobody shooting at you. And so these four destinations are about, I mean, at most, I think, 200 light years away. Uh, some passenger missions bring you all the way to the center of the galaxy. Those pay a whole lot. Those are tens of millions. But of course, they'll take a huge, long period of time to complete. Um, I did go to the center of the galaxy before. It took me in-game 20, well, uh, while playing 24 hours. But uh, all together, I think I took like a few months to complete that. So, because uh, again, I, I'm pretty laid back. I'm not like grinding. I'm not like playing uh, huge eight hour long sessions or anything like that. So, and only occasionally picking it up. So here we are at the first location that the passenger wanted to arrive at. And this is lava spouts on this particular world. Now obviously you'd only be able to pick up this particular mission if you had the Horizons uh, add-on expansion pack because that's what gives you the ability to land on planets, but we don't actually have to land here, we just have to approach the planet, but you can't do that without the Horizons pack. So uh, a little bit of a benefit there. But here we are, you can see the lava spouts, I'll tr uh, I try and turn to get a better view, you can sort of see little glowing spouts of lava. We have to slow down here and back up. What you need to do on these passenger missions is go to the contacts and sort of ping the beacon there. And so here we are scanning the beacon. And once the beacon is scanned, we can go on to the next location. I'm mostly skipping the jumps that we make from location to location. Altogether, I'd say the mission took somewhere between half an hour to an hour. Most of these passenger missions take about that amount of time. Uh, if they only have one or two locations, you could probably do them in 15 minutes. So, I mean, it's not that hard, considering that the ship I'm trying to get, the Orca, is 42 million, and it's pretty expensive. Uh, the most expensive ships in the game are like 200 million. So, if, if you work it out, even... Uh, of course, this is an exceptional mission, 9 million credits, but typically for passenger missions, I get 2 to 3 million. And that's because I've been doing a lot of missions in this area, so they know me very well and they give me good missions. So, you do have to sort of stick around a particular area in order to get a good reputation, in order to get the best paying missions. So that's an important piece of information. But two to three million credits is pretty normal for a passenger mission. It takes about half an hour to an hour. And so, I mean, I wouldn't recommend just grinding up passenger missions, but people definitely do in order to get those expensive ships. I haven't, obviously. Uh, actually, the ship I'm in right now is a Type 6 transporter and it only uh, costs 1 million credits, but then the equipment costs a lot more. Probably it's about 6 million altogether. Um, the Orca is going to be way more expensive than any ship that I've ever gotten in this game so far at 42 million credits, and to outfit it, I will need an additional maybe 10 to 20 million credits. So that's what I'm looking at here. So here we are uh, pinging a visitor beacon, another destination on our way to fulfill the mission. Obviously, this isn't a surface location, and on most of the passenger missions, it is not a surface location. It is just a beacon in space. Sometimes the view is particularly good. In this case, I, I didn't see anything particularly spectacular to look at. Nothing like the lava spout, certainly. So on we go to Suntil, which is famous for its relics. Um, that's a commodity that uh, 
might be necessary for different things. Once I get the Orca, I'm going to have to not only outfit it, but also bring it to some engineers to soup up the modules. And perhaps after that, it'd be nice to take the Orca to the center of the galaxy, like a particularly luxurious cruise to the center of the galaxy would be nice, especially if I find one of those contracts that pay tens of millions. I'm looking forward to doing that sort of mission and also getting some exploration done on the way. The last time I went to the center of the galaxy, I actually took a hauler, which is the bargain basement way of getting to the center of the galaxy. Uh, hauler is only 52,000 credits, so you could buy how many of those with this particular mission? It's over 100, I think it's 180 or so. And so that's quite a lot of haulers for the payout for this one mission. Anyway, uh, there's a secret base. That's our last location that we needed to take care of. Not so secret, really. Um, I think you saw Orca pass by there, by the way. Actually, seeing Orcas and Beluga Liners at all these passenger locations is what made me want an Orca. Beluga Liners are just basically big Orca. I don't like the Beluga Liner quite as much as I like the Orca. Orca seems a little bit more nimble and useful for the price. But, um... Yeah, they're, they're really nice looking vessels and a, a minor upgrade in capacity. For the price, it's not that great. I mean, the Type 6 transporter is pretty darn good for 1 million credits. And the Orca at 40, it's actually 48 million credits, is pretty darn expensive. But it is really good for passenger missions and it can fit the special luxury passenger cabin. So, that I don't know if that's going to give me better missions or not. Uh, considering I already get a 9 million credit mission now without a luxury passenger cabin, I don't, I can't, I can't really imagine that I'm going to get some sort of boost in credits from fitting that particular cabin. But anyway, it's got more cargo capacity, it can carry more passenger cabins, so even if I decide not to use the luxury passenger cabin, it'll be a, it'll be a positive. So here we are landing again at Truly Dock in order to fulfill the mission. And uh, during the mission, you also saw that it's pretty easy to go from location to location. You just uh, open up the contracts panel uh, on the left side. And if you open up the contract, it'll give you an option to open the galaxy map. And the galaxy map will automatically show you your next location. So it's not really hard to keep track of where you need to go next. They really made the mission system very good now. Uh, it wasn't always so good. But uh, it's really easy to do these passenger missions and figure out where you're going next. It automatically highlights it for you on the galaxy map. So there we go. We got our credits. Now I have 72 million credits. Uh, so a huge boost from this particular mission. There's another mission there for 3.5 million, but I don't need that now. Instead, I decided to move on to a location where I can buy an orca. I actually ended up changing my mind where I want to go to get the orca. I don't remember why I changed my mind, but in any case, there are websites where you can look up where things are available near your particular location, so that's extremely helpful, otherwise you wouldn't know where to pick up an orca without these websites. I don't think there's any in-game resource to figure out where can I buy an orca. So yeah, I think uh, Inara is one location. I-N-A-R-A dot C-Z lets you do a ship or equipment search. The equipment search is especially helpful, of course. Anyway, here we are approaching Henderson Ring. And this is where I'm going to purchase my new ship. And again, after I get the new ship and outfit it and do some extra missions to make sure I have some credit buffer, and get an engineer or two to work on the ship's components, especially the frameshift drive. Um, I will look forward to making another trip to the center of the galaxy in style. The Orca, unlike the Type 6 transporter, has uh, room for two in the cockpit. It's a much larger cockpit and much more scenic. This this seems a little bit claustrophobic. I mean, I, I'm not claustrophobic myself, but still, it's a, it's a little bit tight and I would like a roomier cockpit. And I think the orca looks a lot better. Okay, here we are, landed at Henderson Ring, and uh, here's the orca. Uh, it's quite a sight to see. Um, this angle is good, but the other angles are good too. Uh, unlike the blocky Type 6 transporter, a lot of the non-imperial ships tend to be more of a blockier variant, and I like the sleeker style. 
I can't get all the best equipment here, like here we don't have a Type A frame shift drive available, uh, so I have to sell for a 5D instead, and so I'll be swapping that for a 5A as soon as possible. And I decided not to go immediately for a luxury cabin because I'm not too sure that that's really beneficial. Uh, of course, the luxury cabins don't carry as many passengers as the other cabins do, and so I'll have to see. Uh, probably I'll pick it up and try it out and see if I get really good contracts that are worth it. If I don't, then I'll just fit the lower class cabins and try and pick up extra passengers like that. I do have a Black Friday camo. Those were given away for free on one Black Friday. And that if you don't like the white color, you can get it in black. Anyway, so uh, that's the situation. Here I am at Kubeo because I was trying to pick up some extra equipment. And I decided to do a flyby of the ship building facilities outside Kubeo's station. And uh, yeah, they're, they're building some really big fancy ships, sort of reminiscent of something from Babylon 5 or something. Uh, but clearly these are meant to combat Thargoids maybe? But yeah, serious ships uh, outside this station being built. I would really like to get my hand on those, but uh, I'll have to do quite a lot of pass- well, I don't think they're for sale really. Uh, yeah, definitely don't think they're for sale. Someday maybe. But anyway, so that's the state of my Elite Dangerous gameplay at this point. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.